Back when I made my original sandwich from scratch, it's not bad. One of the big factors, and there were a couple that made it only not bad, were my disappointing pickles. Curious to know what exactly went wrong with it and how I could do better, I thought I'd consult with a professional pickle maker. Enter Kim of Grandma's Pickles. I was really shocked to watch your pickle episode. Botulism is the one thing that you have to really be careful about. I didn't actually make pickles then. No, you made salted water cucumbers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what should I have done differently? You should have added vinegar. Can you make pickles without vinegar then? You can make pickles without vinegar if you ferment them, and that's a whole nother process. Thanks to Kim, I learned that I had confused pickling and fermenting with my pickles. Apparently, I had used a recipe for fermenting pickles but then heated it and sealed it like you would for regular pickling, which prevented any lactic acid from forming. This meant my pickles weren't preserved and easily could have gone rancid and potentially killed me. Oh, can you show me how to make some pickles of then? Of course. Why don't you come over here and start cutting some cucumbers? These ones we're gonna cut into spears. I always cut them each individually to make sure you have the best looking spear that you can, because <laughs> I do everything by hand. Kim explained that a key to making really good crisp pickles is to use as fresh a cucumbers as possible, as they'll get softer the longer they sit. So I already have some jars, so you can put what you want in them for flavors. So I have chopped garlic for you, and you need about a heaping teaspoon in each one. So we're gonna put some dill in. I always leave on the stem. If you want to use pepper or mustard seed, try new things and see how they work out. And if they work, awesome. If they don't, <laughs> there's always the garbage. <laughs> so let's put some cucumbers in jars now. And we're only gonna put holes with holes and cuts with cuts. And this is the top secret brine. Kim didn't want to give out her secret brine recipe but she did recommend a roughly 50-50 mix of water and vinegar. The most important thing is that you reach a pH below 4.6. At that acidity, it'll be preserved and safe to eat. We're looking to do about a half of an inch headspace. All right, so we're gonna put on the, the lids and it's just nice to make sure there's nothing on that rim so that lid seals. And then we're just going to do them fingertip tight. So we're not going to crank them down. We're just going to make sure that they're on there. And then we're going to put them right in the canner. We're going to pull them out when the timer goes off because that's where you're also going to lose quality as if they sit in that hot water bath forever in a day. Yeah. Don't think you're going to have yummy pickles if you let them boil for 30 minutes because you'll have squishy, gross things. We're almost there. There'll be pickles soon. See, those are pretty good. So the one thing that I started doing too was just flipping a towel over to get all the water. A lot of times the saltiness of the brine will get on the jar and then it'll get crusty. So we'll let those seal. Well, now comes the hard part. Yeah. You have to wait six to eight weeks before you can even test them. So I guess I'll just have to wait those few weeks and then I'll finally be able to try them out. Thanks for all your help. Yeah, no problem. Now that is a good pickle. Thanks to Kim, I actually produced some pretty good pickles. As for actual fermenting, that's something I'll still have to explore in a later episode. Eat it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.